River Shannon is the background to one of the best-selling books of the last few years around the world, that of Angela's Ashes, the story of Frank McCourt's childhood growing up here on the west coast of Ireland in the city of Limerick. As the speed of the interconnected economy increases and relaxation time is at a premium, how do you guarantee that your vacation really does get you away from it all? Or at least gives you the peace and tranquility you desire, even though you may only be two minutes from London's West End, as we are right now. In other words, how do you get to go to those places known only to the privileged few? If you remember the A4 advert, that ghastly yuppie who turns around and says, nah, not really, not my style. Maybe this is more his style. With house prices rising, are we going to see the return of the yuppie? That makes me think, I wonder where I put my red braces. Tell Charles I'm on my way. Taxi! What was the problem that they faced? Uh, they had to spend uh, a lot of time on the road uh, to, to get information and leave information. Now, that information was paper-based, wasn't it? Yes, so all paper-based. What did they do with that piece of paper? What, what was on it? Uh, they can read out what to do. So how much time do you think that wasted? We think about 15 minutes a day. Having identified the problem, hmm. what did you do next? The sawmill waste and the poor quality wood, and that's a week's worth behind me, is used to make the pulp for the paper and board. Now, there's a byproduct of that process called lignin, and you can't use the lignin or the bark to produce paper. Instead, they use them for oil to fuel the production process. And the warmth generated by the production process? Guess what? They reuse that too. It keeps the factory workers warm, and it also warms 25,000 households in their hometown of Yervla. They also extract the heat from the furnace gases too. In fact, that's 99% steam. But if you measure it, it's 1,200 degrees C in the furnace and just 20 degrees C at the top of that chimney. As one of their engineers explains, they're really a power station that just happens to make paper. The big genetic story so far, really, this year has been the cloning of a sheep called Dolly, but in their hype and frenzy, the journalists may just have missed a trick because the second biotech technology revolution is underway and it is the ability to read your DNA strain using a silicon chip. A company that's at the forefront of it all is Affymetrix, based in Santa Clara in California. And joining me right now, Chairman of the Board, Dr. John Diekman. John, silicon chip DNA, I don't associate the two. What do you do that allows people to read what is in a DNA chain? You know, it's not so long ago that if you wanted to get a message to the southwestern tip of Finland here in Turku from anywhere else in Europe, that was probably your best bet. Now, of course, one of these and your message goes instantly anywhere around the world. You won't find any canals, motorways or railways here, but you are likely to live longer here than anywhere else in the world. Welcome to Iceland. From generating electricity with a steam-driven power station to heating their houses with it, bathing in it and curing their ills. It's no wonder then that they save the best stuff to drink. We'll be hearing what the government thinks about it later on in the programme. But central to the success of the e-commerce revolution is the role of the UK banks. Nigel Ashworth is head of electronic commerce at the Royal Bank of Scotland in Edinburgh, and instead of being in Edinburgh, he joins us from our remote site in, in London. Uh, Nigel, are UK banks doing enough to help people? The Skanska, the process of keeping in touch with thousands of employees worldwide, has been made a great deal easier, not by dictating strategy from the top, but by empowering the employees and getting them to act as individuals. And it seems to work just as well for the CEO as it does for the company dog. Now then, let's go and look up what's happening to next door's cat, shall we?